Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Fathers often delight in their children. We hope and plan for our children to have a good life and to make a mark on the world, a positive impact. Children often carry on the family name, and it feels like in a way they even carry part of us with them. It stands to reason that Zachariah and Elizabeth had long hoped for a child. It's hard not to imagine them being devastated when they realized that they couldn't. Back then, having children was almost universally desired for a variety of reasons. For instance, instead of microwaves, dishwashers, heaters, and vacuums, they had chores, and lots of them. Instead of retirement or Social Security, children took care of their parents in their old age. For decades, Elizabeth and Zachariah had resigned themselves to the fact that their parental and economic hopes were not going to be fulfilled in the way they had wanted. Based on Zachariah's response, perhaps he had even grown a bit cynical and distrustful of Yahweh, perhaps despite or maybe even because he worked in the temple. If he wasn't a Sadducee, he certainly had lots of contemporaries who were. Sadducees were loyal to the temple, but many were more concerned with power and politics than trusting Yahweh. However, in our lesson, Zechariah has learned his lesson. To his credit, for all his doubt and cynicism earlier, now in our reading, Zechariah gets the point. He has not just been blessed personally. He knows this child is a gift from God for all God's people. If you remember the story, Zechariah had originally doubted the promise given through the angel Gabriel. He'd had the gall to ask an obviously divine messenger of Yahweh, how will I know Yahweh's promise to me will be fulfilled? I mean, my wife and I were too old to have kids. Most people just have to wait for God's promises to see if they will be fulfilled. Once they happen, then they know they will be true. But Gabriel decides to give Zechariah a double-sided sign. He will know for sure because he won't be able to talk. But this sign is also a rebuke to teach him and all those reading the story that the wrong way to respond to God's promise is with doubt or disbelief. This is particularly true for those who, like Zechariah or you and me, are well aware of God's history of taking care of his people. So Zechariah is cursed as he has lost his faculties of speech. And yet it's also really a blessing because after all, Zechariah needed to listen to Yahweh and since he was having so much trouble listening, Gabriel just kind of helped him out a little bit by forcing him to listen instead of talking. And it was a sign as well. No one but Zachariah or Elizabeth knew what it was a sign of, but for these two, they both knew this was proof that Zachariah had seen an angel and received a promise from Yahweh of a son who would turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. Of course, typical of Yahweh, it was a subtle twist that this child who would turn the hearts of the fathers to the children would begin by changing his very own father's heart just by the announcement of his birth. Zechariah started off distrustful of God's plan, but now at John's naming ceremony, his heart has been transformed. He's gone from being disobedient and obstinate to finding, well, the wisdom of the righteous. We know Zechariah has wised up based on his response after the loosening of his lips. All the relatives think it's their job uh, to do what Zechariah can't with his dumbness by naming this baby. But Elizabeth stands up for, to her and all of Zechariah's relatives as well, saying, no, his name is to be John. They responded something like, well, that's nice, Liz, but we'd rather talk to the guy who can't talk than listen to you. But Zechariah knows what's good for him, good for him both from a heavenly and a husbandly perspective. And he asked for something to write on, and he clearly writes, to everyone's astonishment, his name is John. Ding, 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 that is the right answer because it was a divinely appointed name. The story is not really about Zechariah and his son. It's about God and his son. And it's the details and the nuances of this story that are all important, pointing to an important point. This is no ordinary child. Zechariah has had to adjust his Zechariah has had to adjust his cynicism, change his stubbornness to obedience, 
and change his perspective from his own desires, needs, and, and doubts to the desires and plans of Yahweh. If there was any doubt about this, Zechariah's song clears things up all the way. Zechariah speaks of a child of promise, a child who will rescue his people. This will be a child who will teach about salvation based on the forgiveness of sins and God's tender mercy. He will be a light shining to those in darkness. This child Zechariah is singing of is his son, John the Baptist. Nevertheless, John the Baptist's story, even his birth story, is inextricably tied to Jesus' story. John will teach and preach about these things, but Jesus, who comes after him, will accomplish and fulfill the prophecies John makes. Zechariah is a good character for us, but not because he's a got good character, if you know what I mean. He's a great example to us, not because he was good, but because he was changed by an encounter with God's presence and promise. His original attitude was a bad one. He's doubtful, belligerent, faltering when he encounters a promise of God. He receives correction and a promise, though. And all's well that ends well, because Zechariah realizes eventually that God's got a bigger and better plan than his own. Zechariah will receive a son, although, come to think of it, John might not be the kind of son the old Zechariah would have wanted. After all, he was a son who would correct and rebuke the fathers of Israel, including Zechariah's co-workers. He would not have a respectable haircut or outfit. He would not carry on the family name, and he would challenge many of Zechariah's contemporaries, those dedicated to the temple and to, that, to their way of life, but not really ready to trust Yahweh with their life. We too, we don't always start with the right attitudes. Sometimes we're belligerent to what is good and right. Other times we are hesitant to trust God's promises when they might interfere with our daily life or the expectations we had for ourselves or our family or they might make us look silly to those around us. But learn from Zechariah that our Lord's plans can, in fact, be trusted. Learn from Zechariah that when we have learned the hard way, it's actually a reminder that Yahweh can be trusted. When God rebukes you, don't pout or turn away from him, because in calling us to repentance, he is calling us back to him. He is correcting our lives. There have been times, after all, you and I have been belligerent to God's instructions, faltering to trust in him and filled with doubt. But remember, not only Zechariah's son, also remember God's son, whom John the Baptist pointed to with his whole life. Yahweh's son, had, and Yahweh had a son, and he had great plans for him. But not in the traditionally successful son a pretentious parrot might want to brag about. Jesus will not be wildly successful or have lots of possessions. He won't even have a, a happy family or a beautiful spouse. He won't buy his parents a mansion or even be able to take care of them in their retirement. Or, yet he will bring about the redemption of the people of the world. Yahweh appointed his son to fight the darkness and to overcome it with the light. Jesus has come to shine the light in the darkness even today even in your and my lives. Just as John preached, Jesus came to bring about God's mercy and salvation through his forgiveness. So remember, even if you didn't get what you wanted this Christmas through the gift of God's Son, we've all gotten exactly what we need from our Lord. God's mercy, a reminder to repent, Christ's forgiveness, and a new and better kingdom in the Son of God. Jesus Christ. Amen.